Do you want to design your first small vegetable garden, but you don't know where to start? You came to the right place, because in this video we'll design a brand new garden in raised beds with the square foot method. The design I did last year was a very basic one. Three raised beds going east to west that did quite good for me, but they are nothing special design-wise, nor are aesthetically pleasing. And also, it is time to expand the garden, and what better time to do it than in the winter months, when the garden is empty. So in this video, we'll be designing a unique new small garden that measures roughly 250 square feet. We'll go through the planting layout for the next season, and we'll hit that like button to make it even better. And that's not all. Here and there, I will sprinkle some tips that you can follow when designing your small vegetable garden. So without further ado, let's start designing the garden. Last year, I received this piece of land that measures roughly 18 by 18 feet. And on it, I started my very first garden. But as you can see, I didn't use all the land. And why is that? One of the first advice that I received from many sources when starting a new garden is don't go too big. And I'm glad I listened. Even though I had a smaller garden, I wasn't prepared for it completely. Because at the end, I didn't manage to cover all the spots in the raised beds and there were some empty spaces throughout the season. But this is going to change. Now I feel confident to expand my growing space. The three raised beds that I built, as you recall from my gardening mistake video, are placed in the wrong direction. Instead of building them north to south, I build them east to west. So a logical correction would be to turn the free raised beds by 90 degree and be done with it. But there's another thing I didn't like that much. Because of the length of my raised beds, they are 14 feet, I needed to walk quite a bit around when I was taking care of my garden. And that's why I decided to cut them in half. Instead of having 4x14 four raised beds, I could have two 4x6 raised beds, with a pathway in the middle. But if I do that, I will just have a bunch of smaller raised beds on my plot that are not exactly a design I'm aiming for. I wanted more of a French former garden design than this. So to correct that, I was thinking of doing 4 corner L-shaped raised beds with a small 4x4 four four feet raised bed in the middle. After all this thinking, I had one last thing that was bothering me. Even with this design, I would need to walk around my garden when weeding, pruning or watering my plants. But then it hit me. I can do a 2 feet wide border that I can perfectly reach from the inside. With that, I managed to make some space in the middle so I can put 4 x four 4 feet raised beds there. I like it. It's clean, simple, yet elegant. A beautiful square garden for the square foot garden technique that I use. A perfect match if you ask me. Before we jump into planning my planting layout, let me know down in the comments what would you change in the design, or hit that like button if you liked it. With the new design, I managed to increase my garden from 128 square feet to 176 square feet. That's a 37% increase in size, and I'm not even counting that for this season I'm planning to move my tomatoes to a dedicated covered trace bed. Now that I gained all this extra space, I can experiment with some new vegetables that I didn't try yet. Also, I can increase the numbers of some of the plants that I found I need more of them to satisfy my stomach. My aim is to make an aesthetically pleasing garden that can also provide me and my wife food to our table throughout the season. That is why I designed that way that the east side of the garden is the mirror side of the west one. With this mirror design, I'll be also able to make some tests with different soil structures and techniques to see which one yields more produce and which is easier to do. So subscribe to my channel if you're interested in what the results will be. I designed the bottom entrance to be the main entrance to the garden and will make some trellis around it as a focal point, but also to provide some support for the cucumbers. Next to them, I plan to intersow some radishes. Hopefully they will repel the cucumber beetles, 
That way, if all goes well, I will have a plentiful harvest. Next to the cucumbers will be a small patch of onions that I heard do well next to them. And because onions can repel the carrot fly, I will plant them next to a small patch of carrots. I will also do this combination of onions and carrots in the two middle raised beds. Continuing at the bottom row, I will plant an eggplant next to a pepper plant. Not because they can protect each other from pests and diseases, but because they coexist nicely providing each other some support when growing. And because the eggplant is taller than the pepper plant, and I don't want him to cast shadows on my peppers, I will plant it on the north side of the peppers. I will also use this combination next to the onion carrot patch in the middle raised bed. And to finish up the bottom two middle raised beds, I will plant some salads that hopefully will get some shade from the eggplant and peppers. In that way, I hope to prevent premature bolting of the salads in the summer heat. In each of the two bottom corners, I will plant four cabbages. One thing that I found this year is that the cabbages grow faster than the zucchini and are harvested before the zucchini has a chance to develop into a big bush. So I will plant my zucchini next to it, giving them the space they need in the middle of the season when the cabbage will be picked. And now for the first newcomer of the season, some bush beans. I love them cooked in salads, so I hope they will do well. Do you have any tips for them? If so, help me and the community by leaving some tips in the comments below. I will call the last two raised beds in the middle of my small kitchen garden brassica raised beds, because in them I will plant only plants from the brassica family, so cauliflower, broccoli and brussels sprouts. This will make it easier for me to protect them from their common pests. And the last two corner beds will be practically filled with plants I didn't try yet. Because I thought I didn't have enough peppers, I started with two lonely plants, followed by four peace plants on each side. Next to them, I will see how it goes with the melons. I don't know how much space they will take, so I plan to plant some salads next to them in case they grow bigger than expected, so it won't hurt me to throw the salad out. And finally, the back row. And with it, it comes one more suggestion I can give you when designing your new small garden. Like me, you probably also don't have a gazillion of square feet of growing space. So, grow up. Use the vertical space you have. We all have. But when you plan for it, do it in the northern part of your garden, so the tall plants won't shade the rest of your garden. In the corners, I decide to plant some pole beans that you probably see growing in some other videos. But those were not mine. So this year I will go to get some tips and tricks to my mother-in-law and try to grow them myself. And of course, I will share those tips and tricks with you. So subscribe to not miss any. And to top it off, I will plant some sunflowers and other flowers to provide some colors and bait for the pollinators for my garden. And to tease you, I can tell you I have in plan a DIY project for the last 8 spots in the kitchen garden. I like the flow of the design and I can already see me sitting on a corner for a raised bed and joining the view. If you want to create your own square foot garden layout but you don't know the specific spacings, you can watch the video that popped on the screen to check them out. And don't forget to subscribe to receive more tips and tricks about gardening and to follow my quest towards a small kitchen garden. And if you liked the video, don't forget to like it and share it. Happy gardening!